I really do. Another pushback against eternal security is, okay, so God takes away your free will and you don't have a choice to like reject your salvation and you don't have a choice to not sin. No, I do. I, I, I'm not bragging, but I struggle with sin and I sin frequently and I'm, I repent and I confess and I'm trying to change and sometimes the self-control isn't there and I'm praying for it. So no, free will is very present. Free will has not been eliminated. But I understand the logic. They think you have been eternally bound to God and you have no way out. So you've eliminated free will. And I go, no. God has just given you what you desire when you believe and trust in Christ. Meaning, he's given you the kind of heart, he's given you the kind of mind, that is consistent with what you should want. You should want God. You should want eternal life. Because I don't, in my flesh, God aids me in that battle. And we're gonna go to Hebrews 8. God gives us a new mind, a new heart, a new nature, a new identity, and a new, really alive spirit that actually wants to do the things of God. So no, he doesn't take away your free will. He just gives you what you really want in, and what you should desire for if you don't when it comes to salvation. So let's go to Hebrews 8. Because I know people don't like the concept of having a heart that wants to do the things of God. And let me say it like this. Someone who belongs to God will never desire to be without him. That's, does that make sense? Someone who has a new nature, a new heart that is responsive to God, a new, a new mind that's sensitive to the laws of God and actually wants to obey in spite of what the flesh wants, that kind of a person will not desire to walk away from and be without their God. Once you taste and see that the Lord is good at, a, at the soul level, I'll tell you, there will not be, because there's a, God aids us in this, okay? There will not be this desire to be without God. And that doesn't negate your free will. Again, when you're believing in the gospel, you're actually asking for this. Like you want to follow God. You want to be with him. You want eternal life. You want to be with him and walk with him and, and honor his name and live righteous for sure. So God gives you what you want by giving you a new heart and all this stuff. So Hebrews 8 starting in verse 8 okay god finds fault with them when he says behold the days are coming and this is jeremiah 31 being quoted here okay the days are coming declares the lord i will establish a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah by the way that includes gentiles foreigners and strangers who are grafted in through faith that's always been a consistent thing. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers. On the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, they didn't continue in my covenant. So let me show you where the text is going. He's saying God is going to establish a new covenant that will not be like the old covenant. Well, in what way is it not like the old covenant? That's what we should ask. We shouldn't assume. We should ask. In what way? Is the new covenant different or not like the old? And he's actually going to answer that right here. They did not continue in my covenant. That's the problem with the old. Is that the flesh does not submit to the things and the ways of God. The law is good, but it's weakened by my flesh. So what's the issue? The law or my flesh and my sinful nature? The problem seems to be my sinful nature. So whatever is going to be fixed in the new has to solve this problem that they didn't continue in his covenant. That issue has to be solved in the new. And that's exactly what God's going to do. So I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I'll make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, watch. In other words, this is God saying, here's how I'm going to fix the problem with the old. You're the problem. I'm the problem. 
So he goes, I'm gonna fix you. My law is not the issue. My law is good. You just can't meet it. This is the covenant I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. Watch. I will, this is God speaking. He says, I'll put my laws in their minds. I'll write them on their hearts. I will be their God, okay? And they shall be my people. They shall not teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying, know the Lord. In other words, people won't be shaking each other to go, just want God. Because those who have the spirit and are part of the new covenant, they will want God. They will all know me, the Lord says, from the least to the greatest. And God says, I will be, here's also, okay, here is also one of the fundamental differences between the new and the old covenant. It's this. He says, I will be merciful toward their iniquities. And you're like, well, that doesn't mean he'll erase our sin completely and never recall it in the future. God says, I'll remember their sins no more. That eliminates the possibility at any point in the future for God to recall your sins again and hold them against you. Once you're in Christ, this promise applies to you. God says, I'm merciful to you. I will not remember your sins anymore. That's an absolute statement about any possibility in the future. I will not remember your sins anymore. That's also one of the key differences between the new covenant and the old. Is not just God fixes me by giving me a new heart and a new mind and a new nature and a new identity and a new spirit. Okay? Also, He's going to deal with our sins a little differently. Whereas in the old covenant, no animal sacrifice, no amount of ceremonial ritual cleansing kind of things could ever deal with the conscience or the soul. So Jesus does. He deals with the conscience. And his blood pierces through the, to the deepest parts of who we are. So again, when I say... When you say, oh, God's going to take away your free will, actually, no. He actually, let me take you to Deuteronomy 30, because you, you don't believe me. I know you're like, mm. I'm just saying God fixes you so that you, in Christ, will not ever desire to be without him. Because you asked for it. This is not God giving you something that's inconsistent with your desires. He's not just giving you what you should be asking for. He's giving you what you actually believe and desire for which is to be with him right isn't that when you believe right you say i want to be with you i want to be righteous and the lord your god this is deuteronomy 30 this is deuteronomy 30 this is pre um a lot of things this is the, the days of moses watch the lord your god will circumcise your heart this is in the very beginning of the, the nation of Israel being fully established as a theocracy. This is like the, the beginning days of Israel as a theocracy. And, and Moses is looking forward, proclaiming this is coming. God will circumcise your heart. He will circumcise the heart of your offspring. So that, you, so that, I want you to see this, when God circumcises the heart, here's the result. When he does this, Right? Or this is why, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and that you may live. In other words, why do I love God? Because I'm awesome and I'm impressive and I'm gifted and I see it? Well, I did believe, but that's not a meritorious work. This is God gifting you, like actually gifting you with the desire and the preloaded heart that is determined to walk in the ways of God. When your heart is circumcised, it's not just, I suddenly feel conviction over sin. It's for the rest of your life, you're now able to and fitted for loving God. Loving God is the result of a new heart. That's the beautiful thing. That's the beautiful thing. And you go to Ezekiel 36, this is the same promised covenant 
that Jesus brings. This is God speaking to the nation of Israel, which, by the way, includes believing Gentiles and foreigners and strangers who who want to be a part of the nation and make God their God. He says, I will put my spirit within you. He's proclaiming this through Ezekiel. And this is what God says. I will cause you to walk in my statutes. Do you see it? It's not you by your own efforts. It's not you straining and striving. I just really want to follow God. This doesn't mean it's without your responsibility. But it does mean the Holy Spirit living inside of you. God circumcising your heart and giving you a new nature. He causes you to effectively walk in His ways. And actually, you desire to be careful to obey His rules. That intentional desire to obey God and walk in His ways, it comes with the new heart. It comes with the Spirit of God indwelling us. That's the gift of the new covenant. That's the gift Jesus gives. Is He goes, you couldn't, so I will. And you won't, so when you believe, I'll help you. And He gives you the helper, and He gives you His Spirit, and He gives you a new nature, and He makes you a new creation. And he gives you a brand new mind that actually sees truth and wants to walk in that. And yes, there's still the flesh. Yes, we still want to do wrong, but there's conviction. It's like a shepherd watching the sheep. The believer will look to and watch the laws of God for direction and guidance. Because God's laws aren't done away with. They tell us how to live now that we're in Christ. Now that I'm a new creation, now that I'm a child of God, how should I live? And God goes, well, look to my laws. They'll tell you not to earn salvation, but this is how you live as a saved person. Romans 2.29 also speaks of the inward new covenant circumcision of the heart. Paul says a Jew is one inwardly. Right? Circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. Remember? Because the laws were written on tablets of stone the second time. And the first time, which Moses broke. But now, in the new covenant, which Moses is looking forward to, the law of God will be written on our heart by the Spirit. That's unique to believers. 2 Corinthians 3.3 3 is another passage. It says, and you show that you're a letter from Christ delivered by us, written. Like you people, you, you believers in Corinth, you are a letter from Christ delivered by us. You're not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on the tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Here's the, one of the differences between the Old and New Covenant. The, 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 the law of God is not written on some external thing you look to. Now it's written on your heart so that when you look at the laws of God outside of you, something inside of you rises up and wants to do it. And yes, sometimes the flesh is strong, but the point is this answers the, that, that pushback people bring. Oh, so you don't have free will. No, this is God granting you and enabling you to effectively walk all the days of your life in his statutes and laws. Not perfectly, not even consistently. But for the long-term trajectory of your life, it will be in the direction of Jesus. He enables that. And it's not to the neglect of your free will. It's consistent with 